let them talk if they want to. Well, that's our theme song, Let Them Talk If They Want To and We Want To Talk. Our guest, I'm Paul DiRienzo, by the way. And I'm Miss Joan Marie Moosey. Hey, Joni, let me, let me pot you up a little bit there. Hello, I'm Joan Moosey. <laughs> Hi, how are you? We like you nice and loud there. And Gilbert Baker is our guest I Let Them yeah, Talk. Yeah, welcome, Gilbert. Welcome, Gilbert. And Gilbert goes by many names, but one of them is the Betsy Ross of the Gay and Lesbian Movement. And you can see behind us, we have the rainbow flag. You might wonder, you've seen these rainbow flags around for, uh, for many, many years, since 1978, in fact, uh, representing a lot of different issues. Where did they come from? Did anybody ask, well, did there, was there a specific person behind the rainbow flags who actually invented it? Well, there was, and there's a whole story behind that, and we have the purveyor of that story, the inventor, the Betsy Ross of the gay movement, the inventor of the, uh, of the flag we're going to be talking about, and other flags as and well. And many expert, other flags, that's An expert right. on flags, <laughs> Gilbert Baker. Thank Welcome you. to Thank Let you. Them Talk, Gilbert. Thank you. Uh, well, actually, properly, I'm a vexillographer. Um, your viewers should know that flag makers are vexillographers. That comes from the Latin word vexillum, which was the symbol that uh, the Roman legions would carry uh, in front of them. And, and from that, vexillography is the, 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 the right. making of flags. A vocabulary like photography word is, is very important. Right. Good for <laughs> Scrabble. Get vexed. Vexillum. V E X I L L. I-U-M, Bexalum. That is Bexalum. good for Scrabble. So, there you go. How did you get into <laughs> double word and you're over, exactly. right? That's a lot. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if to ask you first how you got into gay and lesbian politics or how you got into flag making. Well, I got into flag making th because of gay and lesbian politics. I'm uh, uh, 55 years old. I come from Kansas, grew up in the Midwest, got drafted, served in the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War, and mm -hmm. um, was stationed in San Francisco. Oh. In 1970, yeah. 1971. Lucky course, break. Very lucky <laughs> Although I had a terrible job there, I was a nurse, and it was really uh, you saw the Difficult. atrocity, yeah. the atrocity and the, and the horrors of war really up close, yeah. and the unimaginable suffering of uh, people my own age then, you know, 1920. So being in San Francisco uh, during those years, of course, I, I immediately uh, was not going back to Kansas anymore. <laughs> I really was like, wow, there's a big world out here, and I uh, began to get more involved in the gay community. I came out of the closet at a young age, and, and in those days we were just coming after the Stonewall Rebellion and riots here in New York City, right, and it was right. really a wave of, of people uh, becoming involved, being active, uh, making protests, and beginning to organize. My, uh, and an exhilarating time. An exhilarating time, indeed, for so many people. Um, my particular thing was I love to sew. I love clothes. I'm a huge drag queen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was <laughs> in my youth, and um, and my passion for my craft is what led me to make the flag. I, you know, I'd be making ball gowns for drag queens, and I get a call from uh, Harvey Milk, the famous uh, activist from San Francisco, who was later right. assassinated. You knew Harvey Milk very well, and he'd call me up and we're having a march tomorrow. We're protesting, you know, mm -hmm. some terrible thing and we need a banner so I'd push the gowns away and we'd sew up a banner at midnight. Let's take a digression because I want folks to understand because this is you know New York folks might not know about the power of what happened in San Francisco. Who is Harvey Milk and, and what happened to him? Harvey Three Milk feet. was a New Yorker in yeah, fact. Originally. Yeah, originally. Right. He uh, you know had a career here but gave it up retired to come to San Francisco I believe in 1973 or 4. He opened a little camera shop and from the camera shop he began to um, collect around him artists, people uh, with a sort of intellectual bent, people that were interested in creating a new idea of, of a gay identity, one that was without shame, one that was very out. And Harvey really galvanized um, a whole generation. Like a of shared vision. A shared vision. Yeah. And Harvey was one of many, but he in particular in San Francisco um, really galvanized um, a, a wave, as we used to think of ourselves, of people involved. Um, to create change and to, to start demanding justice. And then, regrettably, quite at a young age, as he had just been elected to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in the summer of, mm -hmm. or actually he got elected in 1977, the following summer in 1978 was this wonderful mm -hmm. moment of, of cultural pride. The bands were happening, the gay men's chorus was forming, all kinds of, of our cultural institutions were just beginning. And he got elected, and it was really wonderful. It was a case where really after years of work our, our hopes and dreams were kind of pinned on Harvey's chest 
and then regrettably in November he was assassinated. Uh, in it was a, a terrible. Thing. It was a murder in City Hall. It was a, a, insane, and it really was a pivotal moment. The mayor was killed and as well. And the mayor, Mayor George who, Moscone, who wasn't famous assassin. gay or wasn't. No, but he was very gay friendly, and certainly Harvey was a very ambitious politician and a very savvy mm -hmm. image maker, a very savage. He could have been the next mayor. mayor. He could have been, and he he was very. Uh, um, ruthless. Harvey was a smart guy, you know. A power is never given; it's always taken, and he took. And, well, Dan and he White, the assassin, was as ruthless in return, wasn't and he? Regrettably, yes. Regrettably, so, that's a problem. But you really have to uh, admire p people like Harvey and, and others, really, who have actually, in fact, given their lives in the service of a movement. So that gave birth to the idea of the rainbow flag after this disaster. No, the this flag came later? from. No, it came before that. Actually, it came from the moment of empowerment. It came from the moment when Harvey was elected. He had just taken office. It came from the moment when we were at the at the zenith of, of, of like, we're changing the world. It came from that moment. And that was the intent of the rainbow flag, was um, to really answer the pink triangle as a symbol for the movement, really, mm -hmm. until 1978. Right. The pink triangle had been the iconic symbol of the gay movement. And that came from the Nazis, That's from right, the, the, very right, right, the pink triangle. Exactly. And it was used as a, a stigma, you know, placed on homosexuals in the same way the, the Star of David was used against Jews. And there was a whole the know, system there, of persecution of minorities and a whole yeah. code system they developed. So the pink triangle really came from a very negative place and really represented mm -hmm. homosexuality in terms of, of being, you know, uh, the victims, to, uh, subject to murder and uh, evil. So uh, that needed an answer. And as the new movement began after Stonewall, people began, you know, talking about, well, maybe we need something that really comes from us, something that doesn't, right. that we're not adapting a, a previous label. And that's really the, 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 the origin of the rainbow flag. We have a lot more to, to talk about. I just want to take an opportunity to ask the callers to, to call in with their questions, to invite them to come. The number is right there on your screen, 212-757-1538. We'll be happy to take your calls. Oh, we'd love to talk to you. And Gilbert will be uh, happy to take your questions. So, again, our number is 212-757-1538. It's on your screen. Call and us feel up. free to call, and we'll, <laughs> we'll take your call as soon as you do, as soon as we notice it. Uh, let's jump ahead now because we have behind us the flag and, and tell us a little bit about the structure of this flag. What is it? <laughs> what are the colors? And I want to hear about the colors. It's simple, too. but it's not so simple. Because there's yeah, in every, there is. Colors. I brought I brought you a flag. Oh, so, oh wow! It's a real flag. A, a just real, a picture, but this this is actual, a real actual flag. flag. A real rainbow Gilbert flag. flag. <laughs> yes, nylon. Yes, it's yeah, beautiful yeah. and a uh, living color. Indeed, and and the colors are pink or fuchsia. For sex, mm -hmm. I see. red for life, orange for healing, yellow for sunlight, green for nature, turquoise for magic, blue for serenity, and purple for the spirit. And we just made that up mm -hmm. because colors had to have meaning. And, and but those are actually based, in but fact, on great. a lot yeah. of uh, right. sort of a fusion of a, a lot of uh, folklore. What, what is in the in the world world of vexillography? Yes, vexillography. What are these colors? What are the actual real names for these colors? Don't they have, or some of them have some unusual names? Well, in the palette of flag colors yes. and the fabrics, many of them do have you know interesting names. Like this is Canada red. There are all different shades. There's Old Glory red, which is a little deeper. But because we're trying to balance the rainbow here mm -hmm. in the eight color original with the pink, which is a little bit odd, and the turquoise, these are not primary or secondary colors if you know your, your art color wheel. But we wanted the eight colors, and, and pink was important because, again, it did harken back to the pink triangle. That's right. And, and, and curiously, much, much later, mm -hmm. 20 years later, I come to find out that in Japan, yeah. fuchsia is the code word for being gay. They say, oh, he's fuchsia. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even know. So how appropriate. Like right? Right. Now, as far as flag colors, which is the one you invented as a flag color? Oh, you leave it out for oh, this. Second. Well, they didn't really make this color. Pink. The top one. The yeah. pink. Yeah. yeah, I exhausted the very limited there supplies. There weren't too of, many, because you think of the flag, the yeah. flag's a macho thing. It's like well, a banner held in war often. Not too many pink flags. In fact, the color palette of flags is very small yeah. in terms of the total sure. number of Which colors. You have to choose from. But that came from manufacturing and the way mm -hmm. flags were appliqued and, and put together. They're, they're complicated. And right. in those days, we didn't have uh, digital coloring, we didn't have digital printing. So, you know, four colors was complicated. Six colors, when we adapted this to six colors, sure. was still very complicated. Yeah. Now, of course, with technology, we can we can do anything. So I've begun to restore it to its original eight colors. And so this color, 
was uh, you invented it as far as this I fork and flag. <laughs> I, what I is guess the name of this color? The, yeah, what is it's the name called Fuchsia. 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 But which is the one that you said was the new one that was invented just for this, this I had flag? This, I, this I, is I just, it. I yeah, see. I had a, it's a, a Pantone die number, quite frankly, and I don't know what it was off the top of my head. But we had to have a fabric mill. This is from a, uh, my second world record. I've made two world record flags. This is from my second one in Key West. I built a flag that went from the... Um, Gulf of Mexico to the Atlantic Ocean across the whole island, sea to sea, literally. Well, let's say and I, I want to ask you about that. Yeah. Anyway, th yeah. this fabric was milled for that project. I see. Let's talk about that a little bit because in 1994, you made the world's record largest flag in the world, right? Rainbow flag. My first world record. Well, we don't want it to touch the ground, right? Do you have rules? Like, oh, I, there are no <laughs> rules. <laughs> Is there a, it can touch the floor. You can wear That's it. That's it. We've it, got to burn it. Has right. anybody burned it? Actually, in fact, let me just talk about that for a little bit. When sure. I first made the rainbow flag, I wasn't even Beautiful. really sure people would get that it was a flag. And uh -huh. I made I two that. flags, one with a sort of tie-dyed uh, mm -hmm. set of stars. Mm -hmm. right? Right. So people would think, oh, the American flag, so and a sort of tie-dye hippie San Francisco. Yeah. And they would get that it was a flag. But in a way, um, at the moment the flag was created, really gay people are tribal. We're, we're uh, wildly creative and individualistic. And flags are very opposite of that. Yeah. They're very nationalistic. And there's a lot of sure. you know, uh, protocol and a lot of rules and regulations. So for us, the people that were helping me make this, and as we thought about it, and in the, the beginning, it was kind of the anti-flag. We wanted something mm -hmm. that reached across national borders, that reached across genders. An that really international flag. Well, yes, and something that really did express who we were as a sexual right. liberation movement in the sense that we were every gender, we were every race, we were every class. When I first saw it, spectrum. you know, as a, as a young man, when I first saw this flag, I tried to think what each one meant. Like, there was identity politics, it was, it was bringing together, it was the Rainbow Coalition, the Rainbow Movement. So I tried to figure out, which could each one mean? Well, you have communists, socialists, <laughs> uh, uh, feminists, uh, which one is this? <laughs> well, that's... Gay guys? That's, I mean. that's, a, that's an interesting thing about the rainbow in um, its history mm -hmm. as a symbol. Certainly right. gay people are not the first people to, to use it. We have certainly made the rainbow flag a, a symbol for our movement. Um, but the rainbow as a symbol, not necessarily a flag, but as a symbol, it goes back centuries. It goes to the Egyptians, the Chinese. It extends into Native American culture. It was used by the cooperative movement at the well, earlier... Well, it's an optimistic omen yes, in it almost is. every culture. In almost every culture. culture, it's kind of a symbol of hope. And, nice. and of course, there's a magical element to a rainbow. It's a, it's a, we have a, call. a phenomena of nature. Oh, great. We're going to go to the telephone and Wonderful. see what's happening. You're on the air. Hello? Hello? Yes, hello. Hi, Hi how ahead. are you? Yes, I'm calling to ask about the, the flag. Um, isn't it like um, part of uh, Operation Push with the, um, the Jesse, Jesse Jackson. Jackson movement? Sure. They have the Rainbow Coalition? Yes, they do. That's right. I met Jesse Jackson in 1983. Um, he was a fledgling candidate for president in the 1984 election. Uh -huh. and gay people... In particular, really got behind Jesse Jackson. There's been a long history uh, between the gay community and, and uh, the black community in terms of, you know, empowering each other and, and spreading our, 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 our mutual struggles for justice. So it was thrilling to meet Jesse Jackson, and I knew that he had the, in the Rainbow Coalition. They did not have a flag, and so we presented him with a, a rainbow flag. And then later at the convention, someone in his organization, I believe his mother actually, they adapted the American flag with the stars and the 13 stripes and changed the seven red stripes to each different color of the rainbow, and that, that sort of became their version of the rainbow flag. Very interesting. Yeah. Great uh -huh. question. Thank you for that question. Very interesting. Okay. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye. And again, uh, please call 212-757-1538. Our guest is Gilbert Baker. This is Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. And I'm Miss Joan Marie Moosey. And we're here to talk about the rainbow flag. And it's a fascinating, uh, fascinating story. Let's well, talk about the largest flag in the world. Well, I've made two. I, I, as a craftsperson, the first one I made was in 1994 for here in New York City. That was the 25th anniversary, uh, right? Yes, for of the Stonewall. Yes, of Stonewall. Explain, you know, some pe there's a few of us out there who might not know what Stonewall is. Stonewall was a bar in Greenwich Village where uh, young people, drag queens, all kinds of sort of marginal fringe elements, in 1969, mm -hmm. um, were having drinks one night and, and partying, uh, rather awake after Judy Garland's funeral previously that day. Mm -hmm. 
uh, when they were busted by the police, you know, breaking into the bar, looking for a payoff and a shakedown. It was illegal and to be They just had bar people had, yeah, well, not necessarily illegal, but there were, you know, just, the police were bad. You could take advantage of people. Yeah, they, and they did. I mean, you could still be put in jail for being gay at that point. And um, people had just had enough, and they fought back, and really within quick order, um, it turned into a riot. And Down people, in Greenwich Village for three here, or four days. Right and here in That the city. moment in our history of gay people really for the first time rising up to fight back the police, um, our oppressors in every community, um, really was the pivotal moment in modern gay rights. Because what that did was it emboldened young people like me. I was in my uh, high school senior class and when I saw that on television, I thought I was the only gay person in the world. And all of a sudden I'm seeing this stuff in New York going, I'm not alone. That's right. I am not alone. Right. And it really emboldened a whole generation of activists. And I don't have to look forward to a lifetime of being a wimp either. That's right. I mean, that's, that's big right. in a teenage it is. boy's it life. Is. Well, it's, it's important in, in, in every uh, movement to resist our oppressors, and sometimes we have to, to physically uh, resist them. Step up. You know. 25 years later, <laughs> you're creating this incredible thing. What, is it, what was and it that huge. you wanted to create? It? <laughs> well, tell us about it. Well, it was, a, a I remember it. Is, it was a mile long flag. Yeah, I mean, you know, that was the symbol. It was this it was flag, a, it was one a, mile yeah. long. And, and then my second one was a mile and almost a half long. So, so it was even longer. Even longer. And, and, and two extra colors. Those are feats of engineering. Those are feats of skill. They require thousands of people to carry. They make fantastic uh, visual news stories. Is that go, pe this is a piece of that original flag? This is a piece from the Key West The flag. Key West flag. But this is 2003. You actually cut up these flags and then distributed I, them? I did. I sent them out to about 200 different communities around the world. So gay yeah. communities all over the world have them. And, um, and, and that's the, the thing that people should know about flags is that uh, a true flag is something that you really can't design. I mean, mm -hmm. I get all the credit for it and I've certainly had a lot of help. But the reason the rainbow flag exists and endures is because it's something that people own. They look at it, they get it. A flag is an idea. And a true flag can never be designed. It's torn from the soul of the people. And that's the beauty of flags. They transcend being a piece of cloth right. into being an idea. Well, we've seen this flag all over the world. I mean, everywhere Amazing. we've ever been, we've seen it in people's windows or hung out for particular And events. adapted to it's, many uses. It's mm -hmm. being used as a symbol of peace all around and the world. We were just talking about the Rainbow Coalition. Right. That was yes. an early adaptation. Yeah. And then right. I, as I was building the, uh, the giant flag for Key West and the 25th anniversary of the flag in 2003, I would get calls from my friends in, in Italy saying, Milan is all gay. There are all these rainbow flags. And I'm looking at it. And, <laughs> and they've got the word pace or peace on them. And I just yes. love that. And there's seven right. colors, a little different, little They're, variations. But it's very big in But Italy it was the rainbow. And I had previously been in Italy in the year 2000 mm -hmm. to work on the first ever sure. World Pride when we really yeah. confronted a lot of the issues yeah. with the Vatican. And, um, you know, it had really taken hold there. And, and then I would get calls from uh, gay activists, you know, demanding that I put out a statement and stop them from stealing our flag. And I was like, well, no, actually, that's really kind of cool <laughs> that the great. peace movement that's is using right. our flag. Because I think that gay people and the message of our movement is one of love and is one of peace. So that it was used that way, I found very flattering. It's interesting. Now, tell us a little bit about um, the... There's a lot, so many questions I have. I'm not sure which direction to go into, because I want to talk about some of your recent work and what you've been doing and oh, yeah. how you developed the flag sort of created this flag, alternative flag industry. Well, yeah, the state flags the are state, so interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one of my projects, Out to Vote. This mm -hmm. uh, piece uh, that we're looking at is from my website, gilbertbaker.com. And you can go there. There's a gallery. If you like flags, I created a, a rainbow flag for every state flag. So we have mm -hmm. the rainbow Oklahoma flag, the rainbow New York flag. And they're flag, beautiful. And they are, and they're beautiful. People can download them for free. And more importantly, when you click on the flag, they will take you directly to the Secretary of State of the individual states, and you can register to vote. That's why I called it Out to Vote. And we were actually very successful with that in 2004, getting people to have, take the artwork and then register to vote. Have you ever had any problems with any super patriots saying that, uh, you know, taking the American <laughs> state flags and doing this to them is some sort of uh, act of uh, des desecration or something like that? Well, flag desecration is an act of intent. You have to, this is an act of, of artistic license and, right. and, 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 and variation. 
and, in, and with all respect to the state flags. We didn't bastardize them at all. In fact, I respected every element of their design, you know, adapting as appropriate. You know, I think in the case of the New York flag, we have two allegorical women, and we adapted their dresses to be rainbow. So I would pick something from their flag and, and adapt it to... How did you deal us. with the Georgia flag? Well, the Georgia flag was very interesting. There, in fact, The stars two, and bars flag. Well, there are two flags of Georgia. There's the new flag and the old flag, but I, I didn't shy away from that. We certainly created the, 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 the Confederate flag. A rainbow Confederate flag. We did. We did <laughs> push a lot of buttons. And, <laughs> wow. But the, the, right. the issue about um, the American flag is interesting. A lot of my inspiration for the rainbow flag does, in fact, come from, mm -hmm. I mean, for the rainbow flag, comes from the American flag. Right. And I really studied early on how the American flag is used in, in all kinds of ways, on clothes and in, in every mm -hmm. possible way it's manifested. And all of that adds up to spreading that message mm -hmm. and the ways that people interpret that in handicrafts. And f flags are a public domain thing. No one owns the rainbow flag. We all own the rainbow flag. Mm -hmm. And we all own the American flag. No matter what your politics are, we all own this. And so you own your flag, mm -hmm. and whether it's the American flag or the rainbow flag, if, if that's something you claim. And I think that that's really the power of flags, is that, again, they represent ideas that people um, understand, they project onto them, and then they use them as visibility tools. They, well, I'd like to ask something just about the logistics of making something <laughs> as big as a mile or a mile yeah. and a half long. Like, yeah, t talk about how many people you had to have on the project and how many sewers, how many machines, how, how did that I, work? I pretty much make them myself physically. I'm a really very skilled scene master, as my friends call me. Um, I do have to have assistance because the weight of the fabric becomes uh, immense in terms of thousands of pounds of fabric sure. to make something like that. And then it's an act where it's more than just, again, this fabric thing I made. It takes thousands of people to actually you know, display them in public and, and use them as a visibility tool. So it sort of starts as a little handicraft mm -hmm. and then becomes and really into event, this volunteerism. So there's a lot of Im engineering, there's a lot of community organizing and community building and a lot of message making around it. It's kind of a publicity stunt, really, yeah. ultimately. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, in the, in the case but of the... a good the, one, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is good because it, you know... And a really productive it, Right, and it captures the media eye in a positive way. It's something that's beautiful and yeah. it's kind of irresistible and, and I think that that's wonderful you know that's 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 the cool thing about it again our number is 212-757-1538 this is and we have, we have a call coming in right now we have a call coming in yeah you're, on number one yeah you're on the air hello 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 hi Go ahead. hello hi hi yes is this about the flag yes the it left is talk? Yeah, there it is I can barely hear you. Yes. yes, it is. Sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Hi. I was calling because I had a question in reference to the uh, symbol that you used on your flag, the rainbow. Uh, did you take in consideration the biblical representation of the rainbow? Without question. That's a very important element of the rainbow and one of the reasons that it endures to this day as a symbol for us. The, if, if you're not familiar, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, um, in Genesis, the rainbow is the symbol of the covenant between God and all living creatures. After the flood, um, the rainbow uh, is set in, I set my bow in the clouds, I don't know the exact words of, of the biblical passage, but God, in one of the instances where he speaks directly to us uh, in Genesis, I set I my bow in the cloud as a way of uh, to never destroy and make a bond with all living creatures. I think that that is particularly powerful for gay people because we are all God's living creatures, including gay people, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and whatever your sexuality, that our sexuality is a part of nature, as the rainbow is. It, that is beautiful, and I think that Hello? celebrating yes. that is, is, is in the flag is, is part of it. Yes, go ahead, call it. I, I can barely hear you, that's why I was saying hello. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Can you hear us on the television? Hello? Hello. Can you hear us on television? No, I, I'm, I was able to get it because I, I was talking to a friend about the concept because I was doing a paper in school, and she called me and told me that your program was on. So I was trying to gather information because I wanted to use it as a reference point. Oh, great. Oh, I see. Uh, well, uh, go ahead and ask. We have a few more minutes. Go ahead with your questions. Anything? We yes, can I do? wanted to know if you took into consideration the biblical implementation of the flag because you know, there's different, rep the colors represent different things from a biblical standpoint. And 
when you know when you had the teaching about it, what what are the different colors representing when you're using it for the uh, gay movement? Well, I'm not really familiar in the Bible that it really gets into the specific color representations. Yes, it in does. Gen like white color represents I don't, the blood. I don't really believe that, that that's the case in Genesis. I'm very familiar with that passage. Right. So, I it's mean, about the bow in the clouds. It's the idea that God is not going to destroy life. When God destroys life in Genesis, that's an important moment when he comes back and makes his covenant with the rainbow. Later in the New Testament, the covenant is, of course, the blood of Jesus at the crucifixion. But in the Old Testament, for Christians, for Jewish people, and, and even for well, is, is Islamic people, the Old like, Testament idea and use of the rainbow of the covenant that's what it specifically is about. For gay people to use the rainbow, as we have so successfully done all these years, is a way for us to connect our struggle for human rights, for justice, and for life, and to be treated, and not murdered, to be treated fairly and respected. Um, that's important for us, because again, okay, that, that connection that, to that, nature you know, is I important. have a, a problem with that because when you're a Christian, you're not, you're not murdering or, or, or doing anything of that nature because we believe that all people have God in them. It's the act that is being questioned. And I, I feel that it's a slap in the face to use something that has been so closely related to the Christian experience. And then to take, because when I was teaching kids about this in Sunday school, they, the the uh, rainbow represented one thing, and uh, they wasn't even familiar with it. You know, that first experience with it, be, be, so it's like you're hiding a part of it. It's like you're taking something that is well known, and you're attaching yourself to it, but you're not coming out completely and explaining it as that as that being a part of your movement. Because young kids see this, and they see it from one standpoint, and it's in they're introduced to it in a way that makes it offensive to them because to, if running, you were open about it. Caller, we're running out of time, so I want to give Gilbert a chance to respond, but thank you very much for that. And we have another nice call, week. too. Yes. Thanks for calling. I, I do want to just respond to that because I think she does bring up some valid points about it. You have half a minute. But, um, I would just have to completely disagree with that. Um, the rainbow flag is a visibility tool of the gay movement. It proclaims our power. We're not going away. If you've got a problem with that, you've got a problem with homosexuality. I think that you need to teach tolerance to your children. I think that awareness and visibility are key to every movement and I'm proud of the way that the gay and lesbian community has embraced the rainbow and used that symbol of nature all over the world to say here we are and we're not going to be murdered, we're not going back in the ovens. Well thank you very much right, Gilbert good. Baker. I'm Paul DiRienzo. I'm Ms. Joan Marie Moussi and we appreciate having you here today. This has been Let Them Talk and we'll see you next week, next Tuesday, 8 p.m. here on Manhattan Neighborhood Networks. Thank you very much. <laughs>